Hey guys and welcome back to the second episode of the Kite Worldwide Lockdown Series for the kitesurf training at home. In today's tutorial, as I said in the last video, if you didn't check it, click here. I will go through the Aspen to Blind and I will explain every detail of the trick. To get started with the Aspen to Blind or Aspen Pass, you should be able to perform at least a proper Aspen. To find out more on how to do the Aspen, just go and check out different YouTube videos which will explain the difficulty of the trick. For my video, I will focus on the Aspen with a blind landing and a handle pass. So I will think that you already managed to do the Aspen. To get started, a good exercise is to go into your garden or even in your home wherever you have your bar which I showed in the last video and just practice the Aspen to blind or Aspen pass on the training bar at home. If we talk about the difficulty of the trick there are numerous factors which are involved. Basically or at least for me it's more easy to make a proper Aspen to blind than an actual rally to blind because the good thing is you come out of a rotation and with the rotation speed it's more easy to get the bar to your hip which is basically the key thing for every handle pass. To get started I will take you with me into the garden to show you how I do the handle pass on the bar which is hung up. After the dry training on the ground it's time to move into the water and get going with the first S-bend and then S-bend to blinds and later even with the S-bend pass and the next step will be then to do the S-bend pass free. So I moved into our garden and now I will go through the trick. I will show you one time what are the possibilities on how you can do the Aspen Pass or Aspen to Blind. And also I will show you what are the key movements and the key aspects to keep care of to actually manage the trick. Yeah, the sun is shining. I can't really see anything, but anyways, let's get started. Here you see me walking backwards and running away from the bar, turning my head over the shoulder and pulling the bar to my hip then landing again and here you can also do it by doing a full rotation before so turning the whole rotation and then jumping off away from the bar and doing the pass both things work and it's up to you what you do so as you can see it's also possible to do it on the hung up kite surfing bar but for sure it's better if you have a trampoline to use that to make the Aspen pass or Aspen to blind and in the end you need to learn it on the water. The bar it's just to get comfortable with the handle pass and the rotation movement without crashing every time in the water, relaunching your kite and getting ready again. You just save a lot of time by practicing on the dry land. For the next step I will show you some videos of some examples on how to do it, how not to do it and what are the aspects you need to focus on. For that I will go on the computer and I will show you now. So now we are on the computer and we will go through some footage which I've prepared for you all from Aspen to Blinds, Aspen Passes and also Aspen Pass Freeze. Let's start off with the first one. That's the first person. I'm searching for the right one. So here you see Michael Zambatov which was a member of the Children of the Sea Academy and I will show you this video so you can be teached in the same way when you want to join our events. And the spot was in Femarn. And here you see how he does the S bend. So, first of all, before you go into the handle pass, I want to show you how to do a proper S bend. And this is quite a good example with a lot of speed, good height, quite high kite, but it's fine. And then pull it back in the end. And also a hard landing after a big S bend. So, if we go back a little bit, we see here. He's edging off the water and stretching out completely. The board goes up. At this point, the board is at the same height as his head. And then from there, he twists. The head goes over the shoulder. The board spins quite high. And in the same time, he steers down the kite by pulling the right hand, which you will see now the bar is sideways. The board is high up. And now the kite comes down from above and he lands with a lot of speed and here you see the slack in the bar there that's the slack we talk about so if you're able to do such an aspend or even something similar you're on a good way to do your aspend to blind or aspend pass let's continue with another video another example and here we have Loni 
Um, let's start off with this one, yes. So, that was in Brazil, where we spent quite a nice time with Kite Worldwide. And it's a shallow lagoon where Loni was doing some freestyle. And we start off with the unhooking process. So when you want to go in the trick, you make sure you keep riding normal and you have the kite not too high, maybe around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. And then you steer up the kite slowly. You lean forward, you move the kite up. You see the kite is going up. And then you lose some height by going downwind. So it's more easy to unhook. And then unhooking, edging as hard as you can. And then from there, you edge, the kite is up, but once your board left the water, at this point, you will have to pull the front side of the bar. So in that case, it's the left hand, you have to pull it so the kite goes from the top slowly down again to 10 or 9 o'clock. So here, Loni pops off the water, turns into the aspen, see here the bar. It goes down, so the left side is pulled more, the kite goes back. And you only steer the kite up to get some, some height in the beginning, just to gain more height for the jump. Um, some people consider it cheating a little bit, but in the end it will help you to, yeah, don't have too much speed, still got the height and be able to perform the trick. And later you can focus again on going more into wake style by leaving the kite in one position or just really uh, don't move it too much. But it's also, yeah, some kind of preferences. People like it, some don't. So do it as you feel comfortable. And then here the Aspen. And this is an example where Loni left her hand a bit too early. So she does the Aspen and she leaves the hand already. And then she tries to turn into blind. And what helps and what really is much better to do is just to don't leave the bar too early. Use your both hands because in two hands you have more, more strength than in only one hand. And then you pull until here, until the board comes up towards. You use both hands to pull it to your hip as much as possible. Because if you go like that, it will be really difficult to do the twist and land blind. It's not impossible, but it's difficult and you get a higher success rate and you land more tricks if you give it a slight pull at this point where the hips uh, the bar the hands go to the hip and the board comes to the front so we continue with the next example also loni again and many girls use this technique and i guess it's uh, due to less strength they have sometimes um, but if you're flexible, it works well, and yeah, it's, it's definitely a possibility to do also for younger people who don't have that much power in their arms. And yeah, here you see, same, same uh, procedure, Loni goes for the Aspen, and then after the Aspen, she let go of the hand. She's moving her hip towards the bar, twisting it, and putting the board into the blind position. And yeah, she's landing here, the kite goes down and then she grabs the hand with, she uh, grabs the bar with the other hand and there you go. And she landed the trick. So that's definitely a way how you can do it. Um, especially in the beginning, your trick will look more or less like that. Where you go up, board high over the head, that's what determines it's an aspen. And then from there, turning blind. And the more you pull with your arms to your hip, the more easy the landing will be in the end. All right, so then from here, let's move on and we will check another example. So here, also in Brazil, there's Osvaldo, who's currently with us in Gerba here. And that's what I would consider quite a low Aspen pass. It will be the yeah, next step after you've done the Aspen to blind, you will do the Aspen pass and from the Aspen pass you will move on to the Aspen pass free, which uh, will be a landing regular or heel side again, so you continue riding normally. 
And here you see basically the same thing, stretching out, moving the board quite high up on the head height. So here, same height in one line. And then after, after the rotation, you see now, I make myself quite small. So I really go together. I pull my arms towards my hip here at this point. And then the board, it's, it could be in a better angle, but it's still all right. So this one needs to be thrown towards the kite, which you see here, this edge of the board, the front edge, it goes into the direction of the kite. And then grabbing the, the bar and yeah, landing heel side. So an Aspen pass would be landing like that with the um, back of the board in the front side direction, meaning you will land switch or toe side. Depends on how you pronounce it or if you're a wakeboarder or kiteboarder. <laughs> Many names for the same tricks. And Yes, another example we have here. Let's look into it. So you can see also in the process here, riding with a lot of speed and a lot of power. And then what, what I do now, I move the kite up. I go, I go downwind. You can even make a small hop. It's not necessary, but it helps to have the kite moving for, uh, further backwards in the wind window. And then you, the longer you go downwind, the more slack you will have after you popped uh, with the board. So going downwind here, edging hard, and yes, then going for the S bend. It was not the best S bend. It was, the kite was a bit too high, and the board was on the head height, but yeah, not perfect. And then going for the path and here you see at this point once I'm around here I pull this left hand really towards my hip so I try to pull it and my head it goes backwards so here from there you see okay the head it goes over the right shoulder I make myself small so I can spin faster get back with the other hand and yeah, in that case, landing blind again. That will be the next step after the Aspen Pass 3, which you can do. But first, we focus on the normal Aspen 2 blind and Aspen Pass. The movement is almost the same. The only difference is in the end the height. So the higher you go, the more easy it is to do the whole rotation and the whole process. So last example here. What I do usually after I popped out uh, out of the water with the board, I do a as uh, not really a spin. It's more a proper rally, and you see the board goes high up, and the rally it's just shown very short. So I do a rally here, and I just quickly do it, and from there I go into the spin. So really the first movement is rally, forward rotation, head over the shoulder. And once you looked around, the bar goes to your hip, the board goes up, and here you see it really, the board, it moves up towards the kite, going around, and then here in that case, landing heel side. So yeah, that's how you can do the Aspen to blind. If you have any further questions, or if you want to have another trick explained, or if you have specific questions about anything regarding freestyle kite surfing, just write it down in the comments and let me know, and I will look into it on the next video. If you are having difficulties landing the trick, feel free to send me the video just by visiting the homepage from the Children of the Sea Academy, which is now digital on the website in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this kind of tutorial and make sure you tune in for the next lockdown series with Kite Worldwide.